Hello again, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. It's still early in the morning and I figure I was gonna do a whole bunch of videos. Might as well. So, this actually came from a client of mine who I just did their first tattoo and they're like, hey, you know what you should do? Make a video of what to expect when you're healing your first tattoo. So, here you go. <laughs> All right, now that's over with. So you got your first tattoo. Yay, you did it. Whether it's small, big, massive, whatever, color, not color, there's a few things you need to know when it's done, maybe over the first few days, what to expect when you're actually healing that tattoo, and like how to account for things so you don't panic and start over caring for your tattoo, which is one of the worst things you can do. Over caring for a tattoo is one of the most common issues we see in poor healing. Uh, for a story, one time I was working at this shop on the east coast of the United States and I did a tattoo on this fella, super nice guy, I gave him my aftercare at the time, which is a bit different now, and uh, he called me up like two days later, he's like, hey, this tattoo is really itchy. Like, oh, well, what have you been doing? He's I've been following the instructions of your aftercare to a T. I said, okay, well, come in, let's, let's identify what's going on with the tattoo before you do anything else and uh, we, can, we can go from there. So he comes into the shop, and no word of a lie, he has taken at least a palm size amount of Vaseline, coated his arm so it was like over, like, like a mountain of Vaseline, and then tightly wrapped it in saran wrap and taped the edges so it wouldn't leak out. So there's this liquefied mass of Vaseline sitting over top of this fresh wound on his forearm. And I was like, that's not right. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? You said keep it moist. So we had to literally grab a needle, gloved up and stuff, poked a hole to expel all of this liquid Vaseline, remove the plastic wrap, and his skin like instantly, because it had been so starved for rocks, it just swelled up, it looked so gnarly. Gave a wipe and it's just like, just seeping all of this, you know, it, it, it was disgusting. It's disgusting. That's over caring for your tattoo. So I mean, don't do that, right? <laughs> Always listen to your artist within reason. I'd say actually talking to a dermatologist would be better because they are actually skin doctors and tattooers are artists. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> you got your first tattoo, you don't know what's going on. Let's go over what to expect, right? So the first bit that you're gonna feel right after it's done is some burn, maybe a little bit of pain, and maybe even a little bit of itching. Now this is normal, depending on how the tattoo was actually applied, how deep into the skin that the actual person went, which if we wanna to go to our handy skin diagram, how a tattoo is done is a needle is gonna break past the epidermis, the top protective layer of your skin, and it's gonna deposit that pigment into the dermis. Now, we always wanna to try to keep it in the upper layer of the dermis because there's vascularization, a bunch of other stuff that happens down further, and we never wanna go past the skin into the connective tissues because that's just too far. But if the tattooer has done a decent job at trying to keep it just topical, the top layers of the skin, which is gonna be somewhere around one millimeter in depth, which is really small, uh, depending on the actual stretch that they're implying, applying to the actual skin, then usually you're not going to see these things like burn, pain, or itching occur. But if a tattooer is old school or they had to really dig it in, usually what's going to happen is that needle has gone so far into the actual skin that it started to damage some of the nerves that are there. So that's where you're going to get the pain and the itching feelings coming from. The burning as well. Sometimes you'll actually see some blood. You might see some exudate which is our number two, right? Don't be scared of seepage. And this is the only time you're gonna think that's a smart thing. All these things are gonna happen afterwards because the body has been hurt, right? It's gonna be responding to trauma because you've taken a, a, an instrument with mechanical force, you've damaged that protective layer of your body and your body's gonna be working really hard to try and repair it. So. You're gonna be seeing sometimes what looks like blood or maybe it looks like a clear kind of amberish color fluid, which is called exudate. You may feel some burden, pain, itching. All those things are within a normal tolerant range unless you're gonna see this for greater than four hours. If you're seeing it for more than four hours, and this is with no bandage on the tattoo, there may be something going on. Now, more often than not in my experience, I've seen it as 
the person has just really tortured your skin and gone too far in, and probably you're going to end up with some scarring. The other things that can happen is you could have a sensitivity to the pigment, the carrier fluids, which is the stuff is what the pigment is mixed in, making it that, that, that liquid that you can actually inject into the skin. Or sometimes even the products that they put on top of your skin, like second skin, those, those transparent adhesive bandages, Tegaderm, things like this, you may have an issue or a reaction with the adhesive backing on this. There's nothing to worry about. If you do use those products, just try to remove them. If you're removing the transparent adhesive bandages too, roll up a corner and pull it back over itself. Don't pull up or just rip it off. Be very gentle with that, pulling back. Because I mean, you are taking tape off of a wound <laughs> that's fresh. So you want to be really gentle with this. And if you're a person of color, maybe you have mid-tone to dark tone skin, try to stay away from transparent adhesive bandages because your body is actually better and more capable at trying to cool itself, given the darker tone, especially in sunlight interaction, to where it will exude more moisture. It's called transepidermal water loss, a, a cooling factor inside the skin. Now, that moisture that's going to be escaping your skin can actually increase the adhesive effects of those transparent bandages, meaning that when you go to remove it, the glue can be soaked so deep into your skin, you'll actually end up removing anywhere up to the melanized layers of your skin. So it can remove all the color on it. So be very careful with that stuff. Uh, so one size fits all, and you should be using them anyways if you do see any type of seepage. If you do see your, your tattoo weeping, stay away from those transparent bandages. Anyways, <clears throat> back on the topic here. Burning pain and itching is gonna be the first thing that you're gonna feel, and mechanical trauma, it's just why, right? So that's fine, and usually, this is going to happen for the first four to 24 hours, right? So it's greater than four hours. If you're feeling extreme burning pain, itching, stuff like this, it's like, oh no. If it's seeping for more than four hours, you might want to try to talk to a doctor. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's number one on this. Make sure that you're paying attention, be safe, but it's something to expect when it first starts. So within the first day, first, We'll, just, we'll do 24 hours. What you're gonna start to see is the skin will get tight. So go tight skin. It may feel warm, not hot. And you shouldn't be touching your tattoo to test this, right? You shouldn't be like, oh, this is hot. <laughs> Cause you're taking your dirty hands and putting them on a fresh wound. Don't do that. You can usually touch around it if you want to, or you can go wash your hands, grab a pair of gloves if you have them, like uh, disposable surgical gloves, and you can feel the heat radiating through it. If it feels really hot, usually that's gonna be an issue with the pigment or one of the carrier fluids that you're doing, especially if it's at that 24 hour mark, right? But that tight skin, that warm feeling, this stuff is all totally normal. It's fine, it's your body reacting to the trauma, once again, of an actual tattoo, and it's trying to heal it. And when it does it, it has this thing we call inflammation, which is just part of the process that your body will use in a response to trauma when it's trying to heal itself. So, now within the next 48 to 96 hours, you're gonna start seeing small scabs up here. Now these are gonna look a bit different than what you're normally accustomed to a scab being, right? Everyone thinks like, oh, I fell off my bike and I got a scrape on my knee and I got this big chunky scab. It's not the same. That is deep tissue wound damage, right? That your body is having to make these big chunky scabs to try and repair or be a part of the repair process. I'm trying to keep it simple here. Um, <clears throat> but a tattoo is just a topical trauma, right? It's, it's not, it doesn't go super deep. It's only, you know, really, we should only be damaging the epidermis and just part of the epidermis, or damaging the epidermis and part of the dermis when we're actually doing a tattoo. So you shouldn't see these big chunky scabs occur. If you do start seeing them occur, there's usually a few reasons why. All right, we'll do this one, scabs. <clears throat> if you see bigger chunkier scabs, it usually means that they've gone too deep. Right? There's a, a more or greater amount of trauma that's been imparted on the skin. Your body's having to work really hard to fix. Uh, it's usually what we call overworked in the industry, right? Or you are having an allergy or something to one of the pigments, a sensitivity to it. This will see a lot in the first 48 to 96 hours if you have a red pigment allergy, which is one of the most common in the industry, and it has been for a while. But you can also see, the, see this commonly with blues, greens, and especially whites. Titanium dioxide whites, when they're using them for highlights, stuff like this, you'll see the skin kind of raise and mound up. 
And sometimes it can take up to six months for that stuff to go away, and it shouldn't be too much of a worry unless you start seeing the scabs splitting, right? If they're splitting, uh, I'm leaning over my freezer. So, uh, I'm drinking my coffee this morning. If you see splitting, where the scabs are opening up, you can see them weeping and stuff, that's really bad, especially in the first 48 to 96 hours. This is when you want to go see a doctor. If you just see some little flakes, it almost looks like if you never had a sunburn, go talk to somebody who's had a sunburn. It's kind of interesting to learn about, but if you see what looks like just kind of like dead skin, almost like uh, just little little flakes, little, little bits of like dandruff almost, but they're dyed the color of the tattoo underneath, totally normal. When we do a tattoo, most of the pigment stays in the body when we put it in there, but some of it is expelled. So when we put a tattoo in, we'll go back to our handy skin model, and we've got this aggregation of pigment. When the needles are going through the skin, they're actually depositing some pigment in the top layer of that skin, the epidermis, before it actually is able to get down to the spot where it makes it permanent. So when the skin is healing and shedding those dead cells off the epidermis, rebuilding that protective layer, and rejuvenating the actual dermis as well, this stuff that's topically installed into the body is gonna be ejected, which is gonna lead, lead to these little small chunks of skin that are dyed color. That's totally normal. This is actually good if you see that happening. <laughs> it means that there probably is enough pigment and that the skin was damaged in enough uh, of a way that there, there's, it's gonna last. If you don't see flakes of pigment coming out, that's cool too, right? But on average for most people, this is what we're gonna see. <clears throat> so, we started numbering stuff and I just broke down. It's probably because it's 4 a.m. So, we're up to the 96 hour mark and this is, we'll just do this, the 48 to 96. At this point in time, you should have started your aftercare routine. Now, if you've used the transparent adhesive bandage, this is usually when you're going to want to remove it. It's between days two and four. Um, so we're going to go remove, boop, transparent adhesive bandage, or you've already established aftercare. We made another video just before this about, you know, skincare and stuff like that. What to do when you're preparing for a tattoo. And uh, you should have already actually established your aftercare a couple weeks before getting your tattoo done. But if you haven't, by this point in time, days you know two to four, you should be doing it. You should be washing it at the set schedule that you've been recommended and applying whatever type of product that you normally would use on your skin to try and take care of it. We have a couple videos as well. If you want to go back and search just in the, the search bar for the page, I don't know what it is, and just look up aftercare, we'll break down a lot more uh, in depth, actually like what to do with aftercare, how to approach it, and how best to um, think about your skin as an individual. But maybe I'll put one of those cards up here right now. Um, <clears throat> so when we're doing this stuff, we're gonna have to be paying attention to a few things, right? This is usually when the itch comes in. And people are never, like, you'll be told, like, oh, it itches. And you, tattoo, tattoo itch is a bit different because it's weird. It's like having a mosquito bite that's under your skin. You can't really get to it and itch it because, like, you don't want to itch your tattoo because you don't want to be sitting there scratching it and taking your dirty nails into a, you know, a healing wound and make it all gross. So usually when we see the itch it's because the aftercare that we're using at that point in time whatever it is if it's a lotion or an ointment if you're using aquaphor or any other stuff it's because the skin has become over moisturized right now you can get this anywhere on your body if you were to just take a product and put it on too much or too often right you're going to see your skin start to itch because it's over plumped and it's just not happy it's become unhealthy so if you're starting to feel the itch around days two to four Maybe think about cutting back some of your aftercare. At the same time, talk to your artist ahead of time before you change or modulate anything because you may still have that sensitivity to pigment, which is something to pay attention to. If itching lasts for more than two to four days, 
we can have a pretty good assurance that there may be a sensitivity to something that was put in your skin. And normally after two to four days, that carrier fluid, which is that liquid that the actual pigment is mixed in with, should be either processed through or expelled out of your body during the healing process. So the itching, if it is to one of those topical ingredients, should stop by then. <clears throat> if it doesn't, it's either gonna be the aftercare or the pigment, right? <clears throat> Along with the itch, you may get flakes coming off. Coming off. Now, this is something I try to talk to people about a lot. When you go to bed, and this can start the first day after your tattoo is done or not, lay down a towel on your bed and get new sheets, pillowcases, blankets, make sure everything is clean. Just come up with a clean, clean space. This is really important if you have pets. And I know that people say, oh, my dog's never on my bed. Yeah, but you don't know. <laughs> Pet dander can collect on your body from just operating life through your house. And when you go to bed, you can deposit it there. All those things are gonna be increased allergens, which is gonna up your body's response to said things, which will actually decrease your ability to heal stuff. So we're keeping the allergens at a minimum and keeping things clean. You're gonna be like in a better state to actually heal your tattoo. The other reason why we'll put down one of those towels is if you have light sheets, when these flakes start coming off, they can die and damage your sheets. And Sheets are expensive, right? Get those fancy thread count. So just do that. There's, there's two sides to a towel. You lay it out, you'll feel one side has short pile, it's really fuzzy. The other side, if you flip it over, has a long pile and it's not as fuzzy, right? One side is for your hair, the long pile, because it's greater surface area, be able to hold more moisture. The other side is for your skin. So make sure you put the soft pile side up against your skin, wherever you're gonna be laying, and you'll be good to go. If same thing, if in the first you know day or two you're actually doing the towel trick, and maybe your tattoo is seeping a little bit after you go to bed, maybe you got the tattoo late and it's you know still weeping a little bit, and you wake up glued to the bed because you've fallen asleep and you got a tattoo on the outside of your arm and it's just stuck to it, you got to take all the sheets with you to the washroom, hop in the shower, and soak it and peel it off rather than just ripping it off. Ugh. Right. So if you have that towel, it's easy just to bundle it up and go hop in the shower. <laughs> think ahead right anyways so we're up to day four properly now so from days four to ten on average this is like my own personal experience right this is when we're gonna see active peeling this is where the tattoo is gonna be shedding off at this point in time if your skin is healthy or in a healthy state you should start seeing mass migrations of any of those small scabs wherever the tattoo is actually coming off this is kind of an interesting space because when you get to this point, the clothing that you wear is going to be really important in not aggravating that space again, right? If you have a tattoo on your forearm and you're wearing long sleeves and you're wearing wool, <laughs> something like that, all of that rough, grabby, hairy stuff is going to aggravate the tattoo and it may start ripping off those little chunky scabs of pigment before they're ready to come off, irritating the skin causing it to heal more, even opening up the wound again, maybe causing it to seep, etc. And that's really bad, right? So think about the clothes you're wearing and, and pay attention to what the seasons are gonna be like as well. Because if it's winter, you're wearing a nice happy coat, you're good to go. If it's summer, you wanna to try to keep it out of the sun, right? So you need to plan ahead for these things. We have a video about this as well, which I'll put up here. If you work a labor job, how to take care of it. Easy, quick hack. Remember to like, subscribe, and if you want to show support for the show, check out the video description for a link to our Buy Me A Coffee website thing. We appreciate any and all support that you've given us so far, and hopefully we'll continue to in the future. All right, so now we're into the home stretch, at least in most people's minds. And this is one of the things that isn't really well known. I mean, especially when you're first getting your tattoos done, it's kind of hard to know some of this stuff, but so we're going to go from days 10 to 30, right? We should see within a month, the tattoo should look, and we'll do some quotes around this, healed. Now, this doesn't mean that this tattoo is actually healed. It usually takes a lot longer for the pigment to actually settle in the skin and all of the processes underneath become accustomed to this foreign product being implanted into your body. And you know, becoming accustomed to it. But the top layer of skin, that epidermis, that protective layer should be healed by now. This is regardless of age, within the month, it should be good to go. If it isn't, there may be something wrong. Maybe 
once again, issues with the pigment, the actual application, maybe you're dealing with scarring, or maybe the products that you're using for the aftercare are actually working against you and delaying the healing. So that's what we're gonna do. Realistically, it's gonna take anywhere from a month to three, maybe six months, depending on the amount of trauma that's imparted, for the lower layers in the tissues to actually heal up. So while we'll see in the epidermis, which is up here, will look nice and clean. It might even have a bit of a sheen to it, like depending on how the light hits it. The structures underneath are still gonna need more time to accommodate the new pigment and heal up and get back to close to what they were before, right? So that's, oh, let's put days up here. Yay. That's what we're gonna expect there. Now, <clears throat> it's a point of contention with some people about this because there's, there's certain things that you don't want to do when you're getting a tattoo, right? First, like you don't go swimming, no bodies of water, no lakes, rivers, pool streams, hot tubs, none of that stuff. And it's not because it's going to do something bubble. No, you can get an infection. <laughs> you have a big wound on your body. Let's say you got like a, half a sleeve done in a single sitting over 14 hours. You don't want to take that big open wound and go jump into a lake. Like you wouldn't want to drink a, you know, a gallon of lake water without boiling it first, well, it's gonna enter in there, right? Your skin is a protective barrier on your body. And when it's broken, it's easier for things to get in. And people have died because of this. And if you don't believe me, Google is always your friend. I warn you, some of the pictures of flesh-eating bacteria in a tattoo are not fun to look at, but you can see that happening. So point of contention with this or not, I'll say usually when the tattoo looks like it's about 70 to 80% of the scabs are gone and you don't have any of the big chunky scabs that are on there, it's just a little bit of the flakes left. Maybe it's just bothering you because every time you put on a shirt or a coat or a pair of pants or whatever, it's just grabbing and irritating it. Go take a soak in the tub, right? If you have a tattoo that is this big and you have a couple little flecks of this stuff left on, Go soak. Let's go soak for a little bit. Chill out. Let that stuff come off. And even if the skin isn't 100% fully healed in that area, it will at least decrease that irritation that you're going to be getting moving forward. And I know people will be like, Ryan, you just said that we could get an infection. Yeah, you can. But how many times do you walk around the house in a day and end up with little cuts on your fingers, scrapes on your knees, maybe you struck your toe? You're always going to have some of these wounds. And we're figuring in the total amount of space on the body that's actually been damaged is going to be low enough that we should be reasonably certain if you have clean potable water if you have well water don't do this just in case right but if you're on municipal water and it's clean and you know that it's you should be good just to go and take a good soak some hot water and get that stuff off and improve your quality of life there forward so days 30 on Depending on the time of year, this is when you're going to want to make sure that you're really keeping up with your sunscreen. You should be using sunscreen throughout this entire process, but usually for the first month, I feel like it's better to keep it covered than trying to rely on a product that needs to be applied very specifically and in a very timely manner to keep your skin safe, right? So if you like to tan and you're worried about your actual, you know, tattoo, you know, when you're putting on that sunblock and just having this big white ring or something, or, you know, your skin is like four different tones because of all this stuff you're trying to do, go grab a Q-tip and spend some of that uh, sunscreen into a little, you know, Dixie cup, something like that. And you can paint it over the tattoo. That way your skin will still look good. If that's what you're into, skin cancer's bad, but it'll still look good and your tattoo will be safe. So that's it. This is basically the, the, the intro into what to expect. And I think that the biggest thing people need to take away from this is those little flecks of scabs with the color in them. It's fine. That's what everyone usually asks about. But I figured we'd do a longer video anyways. So, I'll race this later. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And if you have any other tips for other people you think would be smart, leave it in the comments. If you've listened and watched this far, look in the comments. Maybe there's cool stuff in there. Anyways, I'll check out for today. Talk to you later.